Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, you know, you've been really doing a marvelous role, I mean, in terms of really, you know, organizing this, uh, this wonderful event. Uh, but good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, colleagues and friends uh, from wherever you're joining. I know that there are lots of colleagues from joining from different parts of the world, uh, some of uh, whom I know. Uh, uh, Salamat Sori, uh, Terry Makasi. Uh, we are absolutely delighted to join this esteemed panel and also be part of this very important initiative. I think it is, it is also about uh, you know, the, the roadmap for collaboration. I think that's exactly what is needed in today's world. And you know, as we talk about uh, the, uh, uh, the pandemic, I think before that, I think I'd like to really start by uh, congratulating uh, Park Rimavan, Pradeep Thio, I mean, and team, including Park Gumi Lang, and also uh, at UGM and uh, uh, Ibu uh, Ani for joining forces to tackle an infection threat that has put, in, put the whole world in standstill and in a complete reverse gear, right? So we just, this has never happened before. And what we have seen so far in most parts of the world, although this has really affected the middle class populations, as well as the, you know, whatever upper income groups across the world, the poor seems to be most uh, affected, disproportionately affected. And we heard today about shelters, you know, sh provision of shelters. I think these are really some of the some of some of the core initiatives that we should be really looking at in terms of really preparing for the uh, for the for the, for the next uh, you know future pandemics and so on. And also we are dealing with large populations. So you know Indonesia is the fourth most uh, populous country on the planet uh, with this you know huge density, but also it's surrounded by uh, what more than thousands of islands, and I think that 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 you know that geography is very important. So I was just um, reflecting also on the kind of the Ebola outbreak in the 1976. I think when it started, sort of you know at that time the world was not really that globalized, or you know we didn't have enough of uh, that uh, mobility at the, in that time. But you know, well, when it start when it when it struck back in the early uh, 2000, it was precisely it was I think around 2014. I think well. You know, it was actually out of control. It was quite the fatality rate was extremely high, and some of the countries, like in particularly Guinea, uh, Sierra Leone, and also Liberia, I think these were the three countries in Africa. Probably they were landlocked in some case. I think that's hence you know the, the virus didn't really move out. But if it had gone out, just like the COVID pandemic, I think we would have been, I think the, 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 probably the, the world would have been wiped <laughs> wiped out by now. The humanity would have been wiped out by now. Uh, but, you know, the, so, the, so the point is that about, I think, in those circumstances, when, when an outbreak like Ebola happened, uh, there was, I mean, there was an understanding because we knew what the virus was, what the, you know, what the, uh, the, the structure RNA structure of the virus was and so on. Although the vaccine was not really developed as well. So, you know, so there was actually a struggle to contain uh, uh, Ebola and it, it struck, you know, and it, 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 we had repeated outbreaks uh, since 2014. And even last year, we had outbreaks in Congo and a few other parts of the world. But I think COVID happened in a in a, in a very thick uh, populated, you know, mo most populated country in the, on the planet, China. That's the origin, and you know, we know that well, that, 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 you know, that Wuhan is probably the, the the place where it was where, where there's a lot of considerable amount of mobility and so on. So I think so. Hence, we are really today we are really seeing that this this has become a global pandemic because it has exceeded uh, you know small geographies to very big geographies, almost the entire. Kind of a planet, and the game is not over. The virus will hide and recede into its uh, what is known as a, the reservoir, a host, waiting for the next opportunity or wave. So, but can we afford? But we cannot. We cannot afford to be on this situation forever, uh, because I think that's not going to really sustain that. That's that'll create lots of other challenges uh, for us. Um, so. Pakramawan, I think you've correctly highlighted by saying that we cannot rely on the government. And I absolutely are right. I think we had this discussion previously as well as the with the WHO. And the point is that, well, the governments can only do a little. I mean, they cannot actually provide, but at, of course, they, they need to have some kind of steer and directions. But at the end, it all down, uh, it, it boils down to communities, small communities, and simple innovations like Sonjo focused on community can make a difference. And this is actually the key message from today. And indeed, this is the time to test new ideas, scale up and sustain these, these initiatives. 
And more importantly, I think why we have gathered today is that is to is that we all have a moral uh, responsibility, a corporate responsibility, a social responsibility, a political responsibility, or obligation to share best practices for the larger community and benefits. I think that is really fundamental. So what can we learn from this experience, this Sonju experience? I mean, as you've correctly said, it is just a WhatsApp-driven uh, initiative, but the way that this has really mobilized the entire community, the community mobilization has been, it has been the top of this, of, this, uh, of this program. And, and I would say that, well, it's a technology-enabled community mobilization. So today, internet has penetrated widely in remote areas of the world. I think, you know, within the next uh, one or two years, we will see a revolution of digital revolution in the world. And so, therefore, I think, you know, initiatives like Sonjo has tremendous scope, actually, to, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to manage and control this uh, pandemic. And also the way that I think the, the, the WhatsApp uh, uh, group, I think that you've mentioned that you have now 19 groups uh, that's, that's active. And, and, and with that 19 groups connecting to different supply chains across, you know, across different sectors. And that is very, 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 very key. Like, for instance, you know, well, and you can't really implement this without the support of uh, the local authority, like, you know, well, like as we heard from uh, Ibu Annie, that, that, that commitment is very important. So political commitment or, or that social commitment, community mobilization, and, you know, and then the whole coordination of supply chains is, 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 is fundamental. And this has ha actually happened. And this similar models have uh, worked out in other parts of the world. For example, in Kerala, I know that, well, the place where I was born, I think it, it has always been a world laboratory for you know for 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 public health interventions and the, the state really managed to succeed i mean in the in, in the initial phase and then because of the community cohesion and the community um, kind of uh, model but once that responsibility that social responsibility moves away from uh, you know because i think people take it for granted so when people have vaccination they think that well look the whole pro the world is resolved i think we are confident and so, for instance, the, just two days ago, I was in London, and I was surprised to see that well, there were people were not wearing masks at the moment. You know, probably there is an assumption. Well, I mean, you you would expect that well, there is the, the viruses have their own different stages of uh, or phases uh, of uh, of influence, and we don't know when this uh, fourth wave or the fifth wave is going to happen. So it's all about preparation. It's about disaster management and preparedness. And once we know a more, once we know that a model has worked, then the next time it is, it, it, it's quite easy to really bring that on board and then, and then probably make it work, because I think it's at the end at the uh, uh, you know there is a saying that well you don't you don't look for umbrella when it is raining so you you be ready with the umbrella uh, you know before rain so that's exactly the, the the message that that comes out from today I don't want to really keep my conversation uh, too long. I would like to really say that the models like these, I think these need to be uh, shared and tested. I mean, across the world, that's that's very important. As well as there are, I mean, we need to we need to also think of systematic evaluation and monitoring of such uh, uh, such wonderful initiatives. Like you know, for instance, I've seen that from Ibu uh, Ani's presentation. Like you know, in terms of the data that you've generated, in terms of real data, and again, that goes back to a moral obligation of the government, of the systems to share data so that you would be able to really understand, well, the effectiveness of, of, of these interventions. Because sometimes what happens is that people just spend millions and millions of rupees or whatever, or, 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 or dollars or pounds on, 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 on programs without reflection. And, and I, I think that's, that's, that's something that is very needed. And fortunately, I think in the UK, uh, the, the data systems have been really incredible. I mean, in terms of the way that we have coordinated and particularly uh, in, in the place where we where, where I am talking from, Southampton has been really a, an outlier in terms of uh, the COVID management, which uh, my colleague, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Michael Hutt, uh, Head, who is, uh, who is an expert in the field, I think he would be really reflecting on some of these as well. So I think I'll stop there, but also just to really say that, well, what a you know what a phenomenal uh, effort and, and and you know this needs to be really documented systematically and at Southampton uh, we would be really happy to collaborate with you also linking with other institu institutions across the world i think i'll stop there thank you thank you